they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all matter of service in the field. Their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Mm. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shifra. Shifra. Mm -hmm. and then name of the other Pua. Okay, and we're going to see what they did in a second, but the fact that their names are mentioned in God's word tells you that they are being given an honor for what they've done. And, you know, you, you've probably already heard the story, but they're named by name, okay, which is just one of those things. One, I'm sure that if there was any problem with them being Egyptian names, somebody would have called that into question. And so it, that kind of substantiates it right there. But secondly, the fact that they are named by name indicates that they want them to be remembered for what they've done. So, okay, go ahead. And he said, when you do the, the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. And you understand the terminology on the stools, right? Is how they used to give birth. Yeah, they'd be sitting up rather than the way we do it now. So anyway, that's just, that's, you know, kind of an old terminology. But they, does anybody else have it differently in there? That's King James and the New King James. But does it say anything differently in, while well, they're giving birth? Or does it just say it kind of generally? Or does it say on the stools? Okay. Okay, so everybody pretty much is unanimous translating it the same way. All right, and um, uh, if it's a uh, son, then you shall kill him. Well, gee whiz, you know. I mean, it, <laughs> all right, well, go ahead. They don't want, they don't want that rigor to continue. Then. Yeah, exactly. That's right. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this, done this thing and saved the men, of children, the men children alive? And the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are alive with them and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Uh, <laughs> and the guy obviously believed them because they, they kept their heads. But here's the question for you. They lied. Right? They lied. Does God condone that? Yes. In this offer, I think, probably used a statement like this to do what he did. Oh, I'm sure he did. And throughout the Bible, you are going to find this. The answer is God does not condone a lie, but he will use a lie. He will use evil for his good purposes. Okay? So, if there is a way of not lying that can be affected, that's great. If not, he will use our evil for his good, but he is not the author of evil, and he cannot condone it in the sense that he would say, I want you to do this thing, okay? Uh, so in one way, we never want to attribute evil to God, but all evil that exists, no matter what it is in history or in humanity, God is using it for a greater purpose, okay? And that's the way it's going to be right up until the time we're glorified. And when we look back, we will see how this evil actually came out for a good purpose, despite the fact that he did not initiate it. Okay? These women lied. You're going to see all kinds of lies as we go throughout the Bible. It just, it's full of them. And so we need to be careful not to say that God condoned it in the sense that he actively did something. But yes, he passively allowed it. Many of the lies were done for self-preservation or for right. self-gain. Exactly. This was not. No. It was to protect an innocent. That's right. Yes. So it, 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 the it, the same way as today. Oh, we do it all the time. We do it all the time. That's right. That's what she said, Bonhoeffer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do it all the time. And we have to make these decisions. You know, what is the greater good? What is the lesser? You know, and some people, as it says in the Bible, uh, a man will swear a vow, a uh, uh, will swear to his hurt. I, I, I'm misquoting that, but anyway, when you say you're going to do something, you stick to it even if it causes you a, affliction or your own hurt. And that's what they were willing to do here. Okay, They were doing it without being honest, but they were willing to do it for the sake of a greater good. So, anyway. I have, I have one observation. Okay. It's, been, uh, it's, it's so well known, but her sister Betsy was something unreal. Never heard of her. The German, Germans came into the house when they were in the closed in Holland. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, they they asked the family, "Do you have somebody? Yes. Living? Do you have do you have uh, Jews in the house? Are you, Are you hiding? hiding them?" Yeah. And the family 
said no. But Betsy didn't respond, and she was convicted. She knew she shouldn't lie. She said, yes, we have them hiding under the floor. Oh. Then everybody laughed, and the Germans said, how impossible, uh -huh. And in their minds. And they, they just looked at her like, who, who are you trying to make fools of us? And they left. Unreal. And the Jews yeah. were. Yeah. But God protected them anyway. He but Betsy couldn't make yeah, herself. Yeah. Even for the preservation yeah. of those Jews, yeah. couldn't make herself lie. Yeah, and that that and it, and it did work in the end. Now, does everybody here know who Corey Ten Boom is? Yes, I don't. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. She she's a lady that was during the war uh, uh, helped the Jews, and she is in Israel. This is a great story, so we got to stop for just a second to talk about because she brought it up. In Israel, they have what's called the Garden of the Gentiles. It's outside of Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Memorial. <clears throat> and the Garden of the Gentiles, they plant a tree for everybody they consider a righteous Jew or a righteous Gentile. Somebody that has done something for the Jews where they feel that they are honoring of uh, note. Okay. So when we were there, my mother and I were there in Israel with... Um, uh, our tour guide took us to the Yad Vashem and then out into the, uh, the uh, Garden of the Gentiles. And there was this teeny little sapling about this big. And there was all these other big trees all around it. And he says, do you see this here? And it had her name on it, Corey Ten Boom. And uh, uh, they said, um, this is what Zvi said, they went out there one day. It was, her tree was just as big as all the other ones. It had been planted at the same time. They went out there. In one day, they were out there the day before, the next day they walked out there and the tree that was planted in her memory had completely died and withered away in one day. The day she died. So they planted a new one, which was about this big. So unbelievable, yep. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable, yeah, it was. And if you have not read her book, um, what's it called? What's the name of it? The Hiding Place. The Hiding Place. You need to read it. That's it. The Hiding Place. That's right. <laughs> there are so many unbelievable stories, stories in that yeah. one little book. Yeah, and that is you can I. Go I what's that? So you can go oh, I bet you it's there. That's. Oh yeah. And I'll bet you the Hiding Place is online too. I, I would oh, bet it is. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but I will tell you that uh, uh, that is God working indicating, you know, people that no longer support the Jews, these denominations that yeah. don't, they just simply need to open their eyes because that is God showing that people that are supporting the Jews are worthy of his own whatever, whatever you would call it when he would do that to indicate, you know, this woman has died and this is a, a, a sign that I'm giving. I mean, it's so blatantly obvious but anyway, it's just kind of cool, and I got a little picture of it somewhere posted on Facebook. But huh? Schindler. Right. Schindler. Schindler. Yes. Yeah. Right. He said that's but, a story, but it, it, it didn't have the impact. It doesn't have the impact. No. Of Corey Ten Boom. Because yeah. they were all Christian. And, right. Oh, so faithful, so faithful, so faithful to God. Mm. So faithful. God showed His faithfulness to them. That's right. That's exactly right. Oh, I bet. I bet. Schindler was a crook, though, wasn't it? I mean, he did a good thing, but wasn't he basically evil? I don't know anything about the guy. I, I just, I never saw the movie or anything, but I've seen stories about it, and they said he was a, I don't know, he was a businessman of some kind, he was very, very, very crooked. Was it cars? Oh. Manufactured cars? What's yeah. his name? Schindler. Schindler. Schindler's List. Yeah, I, I, I know nothing about Schindler, but, oh. Schindler's List, he went about saving... Using his money to yeah. save to yeah. get Jews out. He didn't and he used it all. No, yeah. he didn't. But he, he came through the end. I don't either. He was an instrument. Yeah. He certainly was. Uh -huh. But he was very convicted as far as what he should have done. Hmm. All right, verse 20. Verse 20. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied. And waxed very mightily. So there you go. Despite the fact that they lied about what they did, God dwelt well with them, just as we've been talking about with these other people. Okay, go ahead. What does waxed, waxed mean? Waxed means to grow. When you have a, a, a moon that is starting small and getting to the full moon, it's called a waxing moon. And then when it starts going down, it's called a waning moon. So waxing and waning. Or if you're, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, auto zone, wax on, wax off. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. 
Yeah, that's right. Okay, go ahead, please. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, where was I? 21. 21. Okay, and it came to pass, oh, I read that. Oh, and it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Hmm. And there went a man there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when he saw him that he was a godly child, goodly child. She hid him three months. Can you imagine anything other than a goodly child? You know, my wife had a child. And, you know, I mean, I just like the way that's termed in there because uh, it's the natural result of looking at your own child and saying, well, you know. But anyway. Fine child. Beautiful, Beautiful child. Every mother thinks their child. That's right. <laughs> and when she could no longer hide him, she took him, she, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with the same with lime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river river's brink right now I, I believe that I don't have it right here in front of me and while you're reading on I, I believe that the term pitch is this well in uh, well what I'm thinking is that it's the same word as the covering used in the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, the atonement cover. The, and I think the word is kafar, if I'm remembering it right, but I don't know that for certain, so I'm going to look that up. Will you go ahead and read on? Okay. Four. And his sister stood afar off to wit that what would be, do, what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the Ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that they may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the maid went and called the maid the child the mother. Pharaoh's mother and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. So isn't that amazing that the mother of Moses ends up getting her son back to raise him anyway? <laughs> for money. She's but Pharaoh's daughter this is went directly against what the Pharaoh had ordered. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. But you can see God's hand in that. You have to be blind not to see God's hand. In it. Absolutely. He's protecting them. And, uh, 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 anyway. That's right. Mother's not separated from the son and gets paid for nursing. Oh, my God. All right. I'm looking up the wrong word, so I'm not going to worry about that now, so we can keep going. But, okay, please go ahead. And the child grew, and she brought him into Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass... Well, that, just so you know, that word, once again, we've seen this again and again in Genesis, we're seeing it again here in Exodus, that the word is translated in the sentence, because I drew him out. Moshe means to draw out. Okay, so there you go. The word is being translated in the same sentence. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out into his brethren and looked upon the burdens, and he spied an Egyptian spitting on a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day and beheld two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Moses heard this thing, he, he sought to, oh, now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. 
Well, Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh. 